this video we covered the Reichstag fire where Hitler was able to like get rid of the communists and get a little bit of more power but this enabling act actually provided Hitler basically a dictatorship so let's explore what the enabling act was so it happened a month after the Reichstag fire in March of 1933 the enabling act all right so rem remember the March 1933 elections that Hitler called for once he became chancellor he wanted to have a he wanted to become the biggest party. Basically, he wanted to have a majority, so 51%. He wanted to control 51% of the Reichstag, so he could have, he could be, he could basically have majority. And in the election, the Nazis won their largest share of votes. And together with the smaller nationalist party, they had an overall majority, right? So that's really important, because if you have overall majority, then you can basically pass all the laws that you want. Because no, ma no matter what, even if all the different parties banded together, they still wouldn't have majority, so they wouldn't be able to like deny whatever law you make. And using the SA and the SS, remember these were the stormtroopers and they were basically loyal to Hitler. The SS was fanatically lo loyal to Hitler. And using them, Hitler intimidated the Reichstag into passing the Enabling Act. So imagine these strong military, ex-military men coming with guns and intimidating you. You'd probably, like, you, you'd worry about your life, right? So you might be more inclined to passing the Enabling Act. And this allowed Hitler to pass laws without consulting the Reichstag. So basically, remember how Hitler could, as chancellor, he could um, declare an emergency, use Article 48. And so if there's an emergency, he can say there's an emergency and pass laws without consulting the Reichstag. Well, now, with, thanks to this enabling act, Hitler can basically pass laws without having an emergency and whenever he wants. He didn't even need the president. Uh, he didn't even need President Hindenburg to permit him to. And only the SPD, the socialists, actually voted against him. And remember... There were no communists thanks to the Reichstag fire. He pinned all the blame on the communists and used it to basically just get rid of all of the communists. So how did this help Hitler? Well, for the next four years, which is basically the term for chances, the same as like, you know, if you're president of the US, you're president for four years. So it's the same here. So four years, you're chancellor. And if Hitler wanted a new law, he could just pass it whenever he wanted. There was nothing President Hindenburg or anybody else could do. But remember, Hindenburg could still dismiss Hitler if he wanted to, but he couldn't deny these. He couldn't like refuse to pass these laws because it's not really going through Hindenburg anymore. But even now, Hitler was still wasn't secure. He had seen how other groups such as the civil service, the army, etc. had undermined the Weimar Republic. They were able to, so undermine basically means reduce the power of. They were able to like reduce how effective the Weimar Republic was. So he saw how these military people, they were able to reduce the power of the Weimar Republic. So Hitler, uh, so at the time, Hitler still wasn't strong enough to remove his opponents. So he set about a clever policy that makes forced concessions and just a bit of compromise. Which is step three in Hitler's plan to consolidate his power to become the Fuhrer of Germany, the Knight of Long Lives. We'll explore this in the, in the next video. But before going on to this in the next video, I just wanted to um, kind of like explain this a little bit. Like, I explained the Reichstag fire, but I didn't exactly explain what kind of effects this had for Hitler and how this helped him. So this uh, Reichstag fire, right? It allowed, it basically allowed Hitler to pin all the blame on the communists, right? So if the blame is pinned on communists, on the communists, he can basically say, he can use it as a bit of an excuse to give himself those emergency powers, right? So he used these emergency powers to become basically a dictator. dictator, And he also used this as a, it's like killing two birds with one stone. He became dictator and he also managed to get rid of all the communists. Remember, 4,000 communists and, and other opponents were banned. So it basically allowed Hitler to be a dictator with little to no political opponents. Now, the Enabling Act, how did this help Hitler? The Enabling Act basically allowed him to have his emergency powers, Article 48, without having to go through Hindenburg or have to get permission from Hindenburg. He could just, just pass whatever laws he wanted without having an actual emergency. Now, I feel like I'm kind of repeating myself here, but repetition is good for memorizing. So, the Enabling Act helped him to basically pass laws without Hindenburg or anybody else going up against him. And it basically even further consolidated his Hitler's power as a dictator. So, each of these steps, step one, gave him temporary dictatorship and got rid of some of his political opponents. 
Step two gave him permanent dictatorship, at least for the time being as chancellor, and further consolidated his power. And step three in the next video, we'll look at what it does. Thanks for watching this video, hope it helped you, and I'll see you next time.